Hi, my name is Prasenjit Sarkar. I'm a product manager at Oracle. Today we will be looking at the Kubernetes architecture. We'll first look at the architecture at a high level and then we will drill down into each of these components. We'll see what their roles and responsibilities are and how they are all configured. The Kubernetes cluster consists of a set of nodes. Those can be bare metal host or virtual machines. It could be either hosted or on-premise as well. These nodes host the applications in the form of containers. We have two major kind of roles in Kubernetes world. And you have the main role, which is known as the master, which is responsible for monitoring and managing the Kubernetes cluster. And the second role is the worker, who does the actual work of orchestrating the containers. The control nodes are the master nodes in the Kubernetes cluster. The master node is responsible for managing Kubernetes cluster, storing the information regarding different nodes, planning uh, to schedule which container on what or worker node, monitoring the nodes and containers on them, etc. The master node does all of these using a set of components together as known as control plane components. Let's look at all of these components now. So the, there are many containers that get scheduled and destroyed each day. So Kubernetes needs to maintain the information about all of those containers. And those containers get scheduled on where, what time, etc. Kubernetes store all of this information at a highly available key value store known as HCD. So HCD is a database that stores information in a key value format. Next, we'll be talking about uh, the next component. In this case, the scheduler. So a scheduler identifies a right node to place a container on. Based on container's resource requirement, the worker node capacity, or any other policies or constraints such as taints and tolerations or node affinity rules that are on them. So scheduling does, or the cube scheduler does all of this job and sends the information back to cube API server. In Kubernetes, we have different controllers available that take care of different areas. Now, all of these con controllers together are managed by someone called controller manager. In Kubernetes world, we have four different controllers. The node controller takes care of the nodes they are responsible for onboarding new nodes to the cluster, handling situations where nodes become unavailable or gets destroyed, etc. And the replication controller ensures that the desired number of containers are running at all time in a replication group. Then we have endpoint controller that populates the endpoint objects for an example, that joins the services and the pods together. And then at the last, we have services account and token controllers. It creates the default accounts and API access tokens for new namespaces. So you might wonder at this point in time that how Kubernetes manage the communication between all of these various different components, such as controller manager, scheduler, etcd, etc. So the answer is using the Kube API server. The Kube API server is the primary management component of Kubernetes. The Kube API server is responsible for orchestrating all operations within the cluster. It exposes the Kubernetes API, which is used by external users and to perform management operations on the cluster, as well as various controllers, 
to monitor the state of the cluster and make the necessary changes as required and by the worker nodes to communicate with each other. On one of the main philosophy of Kubernetes is containers. Now, Kubernetes hosts the applications using containers. At the same time, the control components of the Kubernetes can also be stored and communicate with each other in the form of containers. The backbone of all of which is networking and DNS. They can also be deployed as containers. So it is obvious that we need to have a runtime to run these containers inside a Kubernetes cluster. The most popular container runtime is the Docker. So you need Docker engine or other runtime such as Rocket, Container D, CRIO uh, installed on all nodes that includes the master node as well. So these components talk to each other via a process called kubelet. Kubelet is the brain of the Kubernetes cluster. A kubelet is an agent that runs on each node in a cluster. It listens for instructions from Kube API server and deploys or destroys containers on the nodes as required. The Kube API server periodically fetch the status report from the kubelet to monitor the state of nodes and the containers on them. So we have seen kubelet which handles the communication between the control plane and the management plane. But how about application that are deployed as containers running in the worker nodes and they need to communicate. For an example, you have a WordPress application where the WordPress runs on one container, gets scheduled on one node and the database container gets scheduled on another container. Now obviously, they need to communicate with each other, right? So the communication between the worker nodes happen through a process called kube proxy service. Now this kube proxy service is installed on the worker nodes. This service ensures that the necessary rules are in place and allow the communication between the various pods in different nodes. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you on the next episode then. Thank you.